indie games, a well-trodden path. These are the adventures of the gamers. Their mission, to play video games, to find well-made gems and to flush out the crap, and to parody three space-related intros because the game's about space. appreciated. There we go. That episode submitted. I guess I earned me some good old R&R, so let's go to Moon. What's that sound? It's like, I don't know, tornado warning or something. What's going on out there? What the hell? Oh my god! Aliens! Humanity is doomed! There's only one way that I know of that can prepare me for the oncoming onslaught. Expecting something else? I mean, I'm not gonna do some Rocky Balboa Rambo training session thing. I mean, I play video games when I'm stressed out. Super Intergalactic Gang Deluxe is a game developed by Martin Cerdera and published on Steam by Black Shell Media. It's a horizontal scrolling shoot 'em up like the great classics Gradius and R Type, where you kill aliens as you fly through the level, picking up different weapons to use and fighting a boss at the end. One little twist to it, though, is the usage of a mechanic called Time Distortion, where you warp time and slow it down to either dodge the oncoming wall of projectiles or to pump out a massive amount of bullets to destroy just about anything in your path. It's so simple to understand that even my elderly parents would be able to figure it out and they've got trouble figuring out the TV remotes. I mean, it's just one of the oldest gaming genres out there, so how hard can it be? Alright, let's get this show on the road! Start game, baby! Okay, we start off with a parody of the Star Wars opening crawl. Nice touch. Only a highly trained team could handle this situation. The Super Intergalactic Gang, aka SIG. Wait, SIG? It kinda reminds me of JAG, but I hope the game's a lot better than that. So you only need two buttons. Just use the joystick to move and the two buttons to shoot and slow down time. What buttons? Who cares? Also, you can hold down the shoot button to charge your attacks. Alright, on to character select. Wait, John O'Connor? Like John Connor from Terminator? Luke Skycrawler? Okay, I can see where this is going. Chuck Norris? Robocore? Rombo? So, this is basically just the 80s hero game? <laughs> Jason? Okay, uh, I guess. He was in space in Jason X. Super Beef Boy? Game characters as well? Metal Man! Okay, so the heroes are in here as well? The Thing? The Hulk? Uh, okay, whatever, I'm gonna choose some... Wait, was that? Is, is that? So... Deadpool is in the game, but they call him Swimming Pool. Okay. Name change aside, that means I don't have to play this game anymore. Why? Because Deadpool is in it. And if Deadpool is in a game, that means it's perfect. It's awesome. If Deadpool is in anything, it's automatically awesome and great. Right? He's never been in anything bad. That one doesn't count. So I'm definitely going with the Merc with the Mouth. Okay, seems like my controller is broken since I can't move. Nope, it works. A button shoots, so by process of elimination, the B button does... Time distortion, like I suspected. So, how do I move? 
it said joystick at the beginning, so... Wait, maybe it's... D-pad. It's the D-pad. Okay, so moving works, and I gotta say it's incredibly fluid. Hmm, Death Ray seems rather powerful. What's this, Hyper Shield? So like, more protection? Nope! Not protection, but basically a yellow middle finger to anything in front of you. What's this? A Jedi sword? They put a lightsaber in a shoot 'em up? Okay, why not? It's incredibly powerful against normal enemies, but rather ineffective against bosses. Oh, and when you get hit, you lose the weapon you're carrying and revert to the plasma pistol. Not that the first boss was that much of a problem, even with the standard gun, its health drops like a brick. So, after defeating the boss, you can choose a random power-up. In this instance, it's 25% increase to item drops or damage times 2. I'm gonna go with damage times 2 because weapons already drop quite often. Okay, level 1.5. Basically, level 1 but with a lot more enemies. Doesn't mean it's easy though, since the increased amount of enemies can really screw you over, as you can see here. Oh, and when you die, you get sent back to level 1. Quite unforgiving, this game. Okay, so I'm back up to the first boss, this time with a stronger weapon. Again, easy as Pi, and now the choice of power-ups is either the 25% more items thing, or Hyper Shield duration times 2. Uh, Hyper Shield is a beast, so I'm picking that one. Even though I'm almost dead already, Hope arrives in the red exclamation mark of the Hyper Shield. Yeah, suck on that, you alien scum. Ooh, and two hearts, even without the increased drop rate. So I arrive at the second boss. Hyper Shield still active and charged. Purple MS Paint Monster, meet your doom! Okay, so apparently I have to wait until it's done with its opening animation before I can deal any damage. Great! On a side note, I accidentally picked up the bow and arrow, and as you can see, this clearly demonstrates why Hawkeye has no place in the Avengers. Arrows suck! You can't hurt this boss unless you hit him in the middle when his arms are open. But that's great, isn't it? On the plus side, using Time Distorted in combination with the Plasma Pistol can really do some damage. Okay, so he's almost done, just two more Time Distorts and... Crap, he got me! Uh, and you know what that means, folks. Back to level 1, killing the flying turd, bust through level 1.5, all the way back up to this guy. So, now I got here with a grenade launcher, all 3 hearts, and the times 2 damage power up. No way in hell I'm losing to this guy again. The grenade launcher does a lot of damage if I manage to hit his face. Problem is, his arms are incredibly annoying to get past. Okay, I got hit, so back to the plasma pistol, but I still have two hearts and the power up, so this'll be his undoing. There we go. So again, I can choose either luck or berserk. I'm going with berserk. Fire speed up is always good. Finally, level two. I wonder if it's going to be any different. Yep, yeah, it's different, all right. First enemy I see is a turret turtle that really takes a beating. Ah, crap, there goes my last heart. But wait, a heart? Awesome, I just need to get... Like a moth to a flame, I flew into the giant bug sapper thing. Great. Well, folks, there you have it. That's as far as I've gotten in this game. And I have to admit, even though it was incredibly punishing and difficult, it was incredibly fun as well. The enemies are kooky, colorful and downright weird, the weapons range from absolute god tier level of amazing to utterly fucking pointless, the bosses I've faced go from incredibly easy to, well, as hard as 1970s Arnold's pecs, the time distortion mechanic can really save your ass in a pinch, and it works quite well. All of that and it has something that most games these days don't have, offline co-op. So this game is perfect for when you're having friends over. 
All in all, if you feel the nostalgia kick in and you want to play a game that harkens back to the good old days, I highly recommend this one. I'm James, signing out. Bye.